Hi, boys and girls. My name is Liz Shanks, and I wanted to thank you for joining me today for story time. Today, I'm reading The True Story of the Three Little Pigs by John Cheska and illustrated by Lane Smith. That means that Lane Smith drew the pictures, and John is telling the story. Uh, you all know, I'm sure, the story of the three little pigs. But wait a moment. Have you ever thought that there may be two sides to every story? There's one side and then the other side. And the truth lies somewhere in the middle. So that's what we're going to find out. This version that we're reading today by Mr. Cheska is telling it from the perspective or from the side of the wolf. Everyone knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I will let you in on a little secret. No one knows the real story because everyone has heard one version of the story. No one has ever heard my side of the story. The wolf. I am the wolf. <clears throat> Alexander T. Wolf by name. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it is all wrong. Maybe it is because of our diet, what we eat. Hey, it's not my fault that wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think you were big and bad, too. Okay, that's like that's Alexander T. Like Wolf. That's but like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing, it's all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. That is the real story. And here it is. Way back in Once Upon a Time Land, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold and <laughs> I ran out of sugar. So <laughs> what else could I do? I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. And now this neighbor happened to be a pig and he wasn't too bright either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house of straw? So, of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into somebody else's house, so I called, <clears throat> Little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. That's when my, my nose started to itch. I felt a sneeze coming on. I huffed, I snuffed, and I sneezed a great sneeze. And you know what? That whole darn straw house fell down and right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time and I didn't know it. Well, it seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw, so I ate it up. I thought of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there, but I was feeling a little better. I still didn't have a cup of sugar, so I went to the next neighbor's house, and this neighbor was the brother of the first little pig. He was a little smarter than the first little pig, but not much. He had built his house of sticks. I rang the bell on the stick house. Nobody answered. I called, um, <clears throat> Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back, go away, wolf. You can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. I had just grabbed the doorknob. <sighs> When I felt another sneeze going on, and I huffed and I snuffed. I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze, and 
and you're not going to believe this. You're not going to believe this, but this guy's house fell down just like his brother's, and when the dust cleared, there was the second pig, dead as a doornail. Wolf's honor. Wolf's honor. Now you know, all of you know, that food is going to spoil if you just leave it out in the open. So I did the only thing that there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. But I was getting awfully full. But my call was feeling a little better. But I still didn't have that cup of sugar that I needed for my dear granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. This guy was the brother of the first and the second pig. He must have been the brains of the family because he had built his house out of bricks. I knocked on the brick door. No answer. I called, <clears throat> Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, wolf. Don't bother me again. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar in that house. And he wouldn't even give me one little cup for my dear sweet granny's birthday cake. What a pig! I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of the birthday cake. When I felt my cold coming on, I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed once again. And then the third little pig yelled, And your old granny can sit! on a pin. Now, I am usually a very calm fellow, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I start to go a little crazy. When the cops drove up, of course, I was trying to break down this pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. But the good part of this is maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar. I think he's in jail. For how long? For trying to break and enter and eating two pigs. <laughs> I don't know what the sentence is for pig napping and then and then ingestion of pigs, but I'm sure it's no, but he it's right. Well, that's his story.